<laughs> Could we, we continue well, mine, yeah. with our reading of St. Zavaraj? <coughs> Chapter 29. Shri uh, Das Das Babaji, whose original name was Guru Dasa was born in 1879 in a village near Picharada in district Medinipura. His father's name was Hari Prashada Vera. While still a child, he began to exhibit signs of greatness. Unlike the other children, he was quiet, seclusive, and meditative. He was interested more in kirtan and study than in play. He surprised everybody by mastering the Sanskrit grammar called Mukta Bodha at the early age of 11. Buddha, sorry to interrupt, which page are you on? 313. Thank you. Okay? Yes. He won the hearts of the uneducated village folk by reading out to them Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita every day. He loved very much the company of Sri Madhusudana Das, a highly devoted Babaji, who practiced sadhana in a cottage made of straw and reeds near his home, and whom he regarded as his only friend, philosopher, and guide. Madhusudana Das impressed upon him the necessity of bhajan and the importance of harinam. He said, in this age of Kali, harinam and Harinam alone is the means by which Krishna may be realized. There is no difference between Krishna and his name. Unlike the names of other things, the name of Krishna, like Krishna himself, is qualified by truth consciousness and bliss. Satchitana. It is as powerful and merciful as Krishna. It removes the impurities of the heart and makes it fit for the realization of Krishna and his leader. It is both means, sadhana, and end, Sadhya. <laughs> if you take shelter under Harinam, it will protect you from all ills and pave the way for the supreme realization. Gurudas took the advice of Madhusudana, the Spabaji, to heart. He began to chant 
he would retire to some lonely place and chant Harinam for hours, or collect the boys of the village and prefer, perform kirtan with them. Sometimes he lost consciousness in kirtan. This worried his father very much, who apprehended that he might renounce the world together and become a recluse. In the hope that a pilgrimage may bring about a change in him, he sent him out on pilgrimage with Madhusudana Das Pandaji. Both of them visited all the holy places in Gaura Mandala, including Ambika Kalana, where Gauri Das Panditash, a close associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, presented to him by Nitagor themselves. There, Guru Das took mantra diction, initiation, from Sripad Akila Chandra Goswami, a descendant of Gauri Dasa. Guru Das returned home after a year. Pilgrimage did bring about a change in Guru Das, but not the kind of change his parents had desired. During the pilgrimage, he had met Sri Gaurat Kishora Das Babaji, who had advised him to renounce everything, like Rupa and Sanatana, and to go to Vrindavan. Therefore, the fire of renunciation was constantly burning within him. To add fuel to the fire, he was deprived of the company of Madhusudana Das Babaji who had now gone to Vrindavan to pass the rest of his life there. His father thought that the only way of cooling the fire was to marry him. So he lost no time in arranging his marriage. On the night of marriage, Guru Das seemed to stand at crossroad. He had to decide immediately whether he should tread the apparently rosy path of married life or the thorny path of renunciation. Thorny path of married life, did you see? <clears throat> thorny path of married life. <laughs> My kids are <laughs> He had to decide immediately whether he should tread the apparently rosy path of marriage. Apparently. Yeah. Or the thorny path of renunciation. <laughs> His mother had died only a short time before, and she had asked him to marry. According to the wish of his mother, or follow the power of Kishore Das Babaji, he decided to renounce. At night, he quietly went out of home and ran towards Nagadi to take Vesha Vaishnava Sanyatra from Laura Kishore Das Babaji. In the Bana Akan of Navadi and was named Laura Kobindadas.
One, maintain the dignity of your Vesha like Rupa and Sanatana. Two, regard money as your enemy. Three, keep away from women. Remember how Mahaprabhu had punished Chota Haridha, the old lady, for the for a person who has realized Krishna. Five. Do not develop intimacy with worldly people. Thank you. And six, live on Madhukari obtained from the Vrajvasas. In 19... <laughs> us went to Vrindavan. For some time, he kept walking to Vrindavan seeing beautiful spots connected with the divine sports, the Lila, of Shri Krishna, and chanting Harinam. He ate what he got in Madhukari from the Vrajvasis and slept under the trees. After some time, he began to live in the Samajavan of Shamasundara temple in Vrindavan. Here, he did bhajan under the guidance of Siddha Sri Jagadisa Das Babu of Kaliyada. In the evening, to him all the rest of the time, he passed Enchanting Harinam in his garbage. He found that some Vaishnavas in Vrindavan meditated upon so began to do the same. But while meditating a Lila, he could not complete his job. He did not. And he found that some Vaishnavas in Vrindavan meditated upon Krishna Lila according to the Gutika of Sita Krishna Das Baba of Govardhan. So he also began to do the same. But while thus meditating on Krishna Lila, he could not complete his japa. He did not know whether he should give up meditation or japa. He sought the advice of Jagadisa Das Baba. Baba advised him to first complete his japa and then meditate upon Lila, if he had any time left after that. He had to give up meditation because the japa figure he had assigned for himself 
was so large that he had hardly any time left for meditation after Japa. After some time, the reputation, the reputation of Gaura Govinda Das as a saint spread all over Raj. And people began to come to him for darshan. This caused much disturbance in his bhajan. Therefore, he went to Ari, a village about four miles away from Govardhan, and began to live there. Every day he went to Govardhan from Ari and returned after performing the Ari Knam of Govardhan. Thus he walked 20 miles every day chanting Harinam. His reputation, however, kept on chasing him. The increasing crowd of his admirers did not let him live in peace, even in Ari. He had therefore to flee from Ari and live in a dilapidated house near Kilokakul, at some distance to the northeast of Ari. His bhajan and his parikram of Giraj, Giriraj continued as before. As a natural result of prolonged bhajan, some spiritual powers automatically developed in him. <coughs> he could easily read the past and future of a person. Once he took pity on a Vrajvasi in grief and consoled him by telling him many things about his past and future. From that day, there was a decline in his humility and bhajan. Went down in anxiety, he went to Pandita Ramakrishna Baba for advice. It was by the mercy and advice of Pandita Baba that he succeeded in disengaging himself from the spiritual powers that had blocked his way in bhajan. By way of giving him a warning for future, Pandit Baba said, Harinam is like Kalpataru, the desire tree. It gives to the sadhaka whatever he wants. If while doing Nama Japa, a sadhaka thinks of the powers of Krishna, it generates those powers in him. If he thinks of his love, then it instills his heart with love for Krishna. It is through the eyes of love that he enjoys the exuberant sweetness, Madhurya, of his divine Leela. Without love, one may realize Krishna, but not his Madhurya. There you've got it, Gurudev. Wow. 
It is through the eyes of love that he enjoys the exuberant sweetness, Madhurya, of his divine Lila. Without love, one may realize Krishna, but not his Madhurya. That realization is apparent sweetness, not his sweet. Loving side, we cannot gain to. And that is a lack of. Realization of Krishna without love generates powers like omniscience, all knowing, which block one's spiritual development. Again, realization of Krishna without love. Generates powers like omniscience, the ability to know everything. Which oh, no, I do not understand. I'm sorry. Okay. Realization of Krishna without love generates powers like omniscience, omni om omniscience, which block one's spiritual development. What is the meaning of that? Knowing that you get powers. Just say some features in this Krishna, which one is to be omniscient so that you know everything. You can see one person like he told the future and past of this Brajavasi because he had this omniscience power. Oh, but we can to, 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 to see, see different things. to see to know uh, be able to see and understand uh, everything by seeing others also their past, futures, what is happening here and there. But this is a blockage actually for exactly. really developing love, developing prema. Why that, Buddha? Because then we go in material advertisement that also. we have to hide it. Sometimes I also do these things and then I feel down myself and I am. It's not good. Even realization to share is not good. This makes blockage to reach the prema by prema loving connection. It blocks. <laughs> but how to increase for us? If like you cannot read or should not be really share your realizations, how can we develop? And you have to see who share something, how much he gets that himself fails to share that. Mm -hmm. If he shares something, means he loses himself to inspire others. Mm -hmm. That is his great mercy. He has to lose to help others. And he is ready to lose because of the love. That's a mercy now. Easy for him to reach there, but he loses to that to help us. This is Guru Krishna. So it's like you're climbing a mountain and you're a little bit ahead, so you actually go back to help the other to get the next step. And then you go further, you come back and you help again. Like a little bit like this. Uh, what you feel, but this is the problem. This is the helping nature. In the nature, the spiritual developers always want to help others. But I lose to 
moment and the time and my goal to help others. That is the march of Saint Philippus. I don't know if his voice was low or was quite high voice. His highest. Was someone speaking? Yes. Since then, Gaura Govinda Das began to join the assembly of sadhus, which used to be held every evening for religious talks somewhere in Govardhan under the natural leadership of Pandita Baba. One day, the assembly was held in the courtyard of Nashina, Nashina Ji's temple. As soon as the assembly was over, it began to rain. Gaura Govinda Das said, it would have been better if the rain started a little later when each one of us had returned to his kuti. Pandita Baba snubbed him by saying, what? Self-seeking. You cannot realize Krishna so long as you have the slightest desire for your own happiness. You must give up the desire for your own happiness or well-being in this world, as well as in the celestial world, and desire only the happiness of Krishna. Wow if you want to realize him. Wow. On the advice of Pandita Baba, Gaura Govinda Das began to do bhajan in a kuti near Apsarakund in Puchari. This was a lonely place. No one lived there except him and another Mahatma in the form of a bela, a wood apple tree, in front of his kuti, who conversed with him on topics regarding Krishna and his lila. When the bela tree first bore fruit, it appeared before him in human form and said, you have watered and made me grow under your care since my infancy. I have a request to you. When my fruits ripen, you pluck and distribute them amongst the temples and the Mahatmas of Braj for the service of Krishna. Gaura Govindras did likewise. One day, someone came and hung his clothes over the tree. The tree asked Gaura Govinda Das not to allow anyone to hang his clothes over it, because that disturbed its bhajan. Gaura Govinda Baba continued to make steady progress in bhajan. He could now repeat Harinam eight locks of times a day. For him, day and night made no difference. He neither woke nor slept. In a half-conscious state, he was always doing japa. While doing japa, he was often overwhelmed with bhav, emotion, and danced and wept. In Adi Purana, Krishna says to Arjuna, Listen, O, o Arjuna, those who dance or weep before me while chanting my name, I am sold out to them, as I am not sold out to anyone else. Gaura Govinda Baba 
had nothing to do except chanting Harinam and dancing and weeping before Sri Hari. Therefore, it was natural that Sri Hari should have been sold out to him. The extent to which he was sold out to him would appear from an interesting episode. Once, Baba returned late to his kuti after Madhukari due to rain. He was very hungry. Therefore, he forgot to offer to Madhukari to Krishna before eating. He was swallowing the first morsel when suddenly he realized that he was eating unoffered food. He held his throat to prevent swallowing it, but it went down. Then there was no end to his self condemnation. His hunger disappeared, and the Madhukari lay before him untouched. At that time, sweet voice coming from inside the cottage rang in his ears. Every day you offer me the remains of the food of Rajvasis. Will heavens fall if today you offer me the remains of your own food? Come, offer now. Do not hesitate. Gaura Govinda was thrilled to the core. A shiver went through his body. Hair stood at their ends and tears flowed from his eyes. Hesitatingly, he offered to Krishna the remains of his own food and then ate it himself. The taste of the Madhukari he ate that day was exceptionally delightful and ravishing. It was bound to be because that day Krishna himself had eaten the offering with greater relish. Has anyone ever heard of a God as loving and lovable as Sri Krishna of Raj? In 1959, Gauranga, Gaura Govinda Das left his physical body to join the divine Leela It's hard near Chapter 30. Sri Satyananda Das Babaji. Sri Satyananda Das Baba was 110 years old in December 1972 when I went to see him with Sri Rama Jivana Das Baba of Varsana. Parasana. This jiva who was well known to him. Baba lived in an old dilapidated chatari, a room containing someone's samadhi, near Samashana Bhumi, a place for burning the dead. On the bank of Banu, Sa Banu Sarovara in Parasana. 
As we entered the Chatari, we saw Baba sitting square-legged with his back resting against the wall in a state of deep meditation. His lips were moving slowly and a resonant sound was coming out of his throat. Adama Jivana Baba told me that he was chanting Adai, Adai, Radharani's nickname. The chanting had become habitual with him and it went on automatically even in the state of deep meditation. Baba had lost his eyesight, but his audition, his hearing, was intact. Still, he could not hear Rama Jivana Baba talking because he had no outer consciousness. On the craggy floor of the Chatari, with pits here and there, the Tatari and Gagi of Promus? The Tatari, the. Oh, sorry, bumpy. Right. Uneven bumps. Mm -hmm. On the craggy floor of the Chatari, work with pits here and there, with some small holes, mm -hmm. were kept on one side an earthen pitcher with water. An earthen karava and earthen plate. There was a piece of guni cloth on which Baba was sitting, and a gudani or a quilt made of rags, half of which was hanging from his left shoulder and half lying on the floor. Baba was bare bodied with only a loincloth round his waist. There was nothing else in the Chatari. The severe cold of the month of December did not seem to be a matter of the slightest concern to the Baba. Baba did not easily give Diksha to anyone. He had only four disciples, of whom Anuragi Baba was the foremost. He did not allow his disciples to live with him. However, Anuragi Baba came and stayed with him occasionally, but at this time Baba was all alone. <coughs> We sat down and began to wait for some sign of Baba's returning to the outer world. But for a long time, there was no such sign. Baba was sitting all along like a statue. This was his normal condition. He used to be generally in the inner world the transcendental world of the Leela of Radha Krishna and came out of it only casually, especially when compelled by the needs of the body. Even while attending to the needs of the body, he used to be sometimes lost in meditation and the bodily activity, like eating or easing nature, either continued automatically as a matter of habit, or slackened, or even stopped and remained suspended for hours. <clears throat> After we had waited till late in the evening, Dama Jivana Baba shouted, Rade, Rade! 
After he had shouted several times, Baba said in a low voice, as if he was speaking from a long distance. Rama Jivana Baba said, I, Rama Jivana. Then, introducing me to him, he said, He has come from Vrindavan for your darshan. Kindly show mercy on him. Baba was quiet for some time. Then, he began to sing a song which described Krishna Balaram returning from the forest at dusk with the cows and the cow herds. Krishna was playing on the flute and the cow herds were blowing horns and dancing while the milkmaids of Mraj, overwhelmed with joy and emotion at the sight of Krishna, sang propitious songs from the balconies. He was thus describing what he had just seen. Baba was a good singer, and his voice, even at this age, was sweet. As he sang, it did not appear that it was an old Babaji who was singing, but a Amraj, who was so overwhelmed at the sight of Krishna that she could not but pour her heart out in the form of the song. As the song was over, Baba again sank into deep meditation. We quietly came out of the room, leaving Baba alone to relish the homecoming of Krishna. Very little is known about the early life of Satyananda Das Baba. He was born in Bengal, but exactly in which place and when, no one knows. He often told Anuragi Baba that since his very childhood, he had great liking for Kata and Kirtan, even if Kata or Kirtan was held at a place 10 miles away from his home and at night, he did not hesitate to go there without informing his people. He stayed there throughout the night and returned the next morning. When he was reprimanded and punished for this, he prayed for deliverance from the bonds of his family. His prayer was heard and he was given necessary strength to cut asunder the bonds. One night he slinked away from home. After remaining on pilgrimage to the different holy places in the country for about two years, he went to Vrindavan. <coughs> he had already taken diksha from someone. On reaching Vrindavan, he took Vesha from Sida Ramahari Das Baba a disciple of Sida Jagannatha Daspa. For some time, he wandered here and there in Vraj. Finally, he came to the Chatari, where he had been living for over 80 years. When I first met him with the Ramajiva Nababa. Anuragi Baba says that once when he was staying with Baba, there was unprecedented rainfall, on account of which the area around the Chatari was flooded and it became very difficult to move in and out of the Chatari. He requested Baba to shift to some other place, 
especially because snakes and other poisonous creatures were likely to creep into the Chatari to save themselves from the flood. But Baba refused to shift. At night, when it was still raining heavily, Baba was stung by a scorpion on his finger. There was excruciating pain. Anuragi Baba tied his finger with a string so that the poison might not spread and then became restless to go out in search of some other treatment. <clears throat> but it was not possible to go out on account of torrential rain. Baba said to him, Do not bother me. I will soon be absorbed in Lila. I shall then be unaware of the pain. This is what actually happened. Next morning, when Anuragi Baba inquired about the pain, Baba had forgotten all about it. Baba used to serve Radharani, the deity, in the temple of Barashana in various ways. He picked flowers from various places and weaved garlands for her. Sometimes, when there was utter want of flowers in Barashana, he went on foot to Vrindavan at night and returned next morning with flowers. He weaved the flowers into garlands and offered them to Radharani. During the holy festival, he used to be busy all day in cleaning the passage from Banu Sarovara to the temple of Radharani. Once, he saw beautiful flowers blooming in a garden near Kosi. He desired to weave them into garlands for Radharani. He asked for the owner's permission to pick them, but the owner refused permission. Then, at night, he slept in the veranda of the empty house near the garden. At midnight, some thieves gathered near the house with a view to commit theft somewhere. They saw Baba sleeping in the veranda. The chief gave him a jolt and asked, Who are you? A thief, replied Baba. <laughs> thief? Where are you going to commit theft? In this garden. What is there in the garden? Flowers. Will the flowers bake your bread? They will. How? You will hardly get anything by selling them. I will not sell them. I shall weave them into garlands for Radharani. Radharani will be pleased. Her pleasure will bring about my deliverance from the bondage of Maya and all my needs will be fulfilled for all times. The thieves were impressed by Baba. They said, very well, Baba, let us all go. We shall join you in the theft. <laughs> Baba stole heaps of flowers with their help. <laughs> They also helped him in weaving garlands <laughs> and different kinds of ornaments for Radharani. Stealing for Radharani made the thieves forget stealing for themselves. They became devotees of Radharani <laughs> and often visited Baba in his chatari for his company and guidance. <laughs> Baba used to do bhajan in his chatari throughout the day. In the evening, he went out for madhukari. Sometimes, he got some rotis in madhukari, then he could eat. 
He did not throw them away. Sorry. Sometimes he got more rotis in Madhukari than he could eat. He did not throw them away, nor give them to someone. He dried them so that he might eat the dried rotis when, on account of his absorption in Lila, he did not feel like going out for Madhukari. Later, when he lost his teeth, and it was no more possible to eat the dried rotis, he used to grind them into powder and make pills by mixing the powder with water. He used to swallow the pills. If the pills did not taste well or did not satisfy his hunger, he started chanting, Rai, Rai. He relished the name so much that he forgot all about the taste. All about the taste, hunger, and thirst. He often used to sing the following Bengali song, which describes this potency of the name to conquer thirst and hunger. No more shall I play with dust, for I have now begun to relish Harinam. Neither shall I go to my mother when hungry, nor eat, for the name Rai has conquered my hunger and thirst. Baba always used to chant Rai and be absorbed in the meditation <laughs> of the Astakalina Lila of Radha Krishna. After some time, when his absorption in the name and the Leela became very deep, he stopped going for Madhu Kari. He remained seated on the asana in deep meditation, like a statue. For the tourists who came to Barashana, he was a marvel. For the pilgrims, he was an object of worship. The pandas took them to him, just as they took them to the different images of gods and goddesses for darshan, in their own interest. The pilgrims bowed down to Baba, just as they had bowed down to other statues, made them offerings, and came away. The offerings were later picked up by the pandas. Baba neither knew anything about them, nor had any need for them. If, when a pilgrim visited him, he happened to be in a conscious or semi-conscious state, he entertained him with a song relating to the Asakalina Lila of Radha Krishna of that particular time. Baba left his physical body to serve Radharani in his spiritual body in the form of a mantri, a sakhi exclu exclusively devoted to Radharani on the 10th day of Krishna Paksha in the month of Vaisaka in 1974. Baba was great and wonderful. One might ask, is it possible to conquer Maya fully while remaining in the physical body? which is a product of maya? Is it possible to live if one depends entirely upon the Lord and does not even go to bake for the food? Does the Lord himself really bear the burden of the well-being of such a person? The length of Baba's life, in spite of his utter indifference to the world and the body, and his contentment, and beatitude would provide the answer. That completes the Leela of Karagovinda Daspata. Thank
Guru does not protesting. Chapter 31. Shriyavada Das Babaji. In Mithilapuri in Bihar, there lived Shri Hari Kinkare Yogin Dravara, a saint of Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, who had unlimited faith in Srimad Bhagavatam. One day when he was in perfect health, he called his disciples and said that he would leave his body on a particular day in the month of Kartik while reading Srimad Bhagavatam on the bank of Ganga in Samaria Gata. On that day, he went to Samaria Gata with his disciples, sat down on the bank of Ganga, and started reading Srimad Bhagavatam. As soon as he began to read Rasa Panchadhyaya, the portion relating to Rasa Lila, he was so overwhelmed with Bhav that he exclaimed, Ha Krishna! and left the body to join the Rasalila in his Siddhadeha in transcendental Rindav. Yeah. Shri Jamuna Das and Shri Avada Das were the two foremost disciples of Shri Hari Kinkara. Before he left for Samaria Gata, he had called them both. He told Jabuna Das, after I have gone, you should go to different parts of the country and preach Vaishnavism. To Avada Das, he had said, you should go go to Vrindavan and do bhajan. Avridas Baba was born about the year 1826 in a Maitila Brahmin family in a village called Mandara Madhusadana in district Bagala, Bagalapura of Bihar, which was sanctified by the dust of the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he was on his way to Gaya. That's the point. This is where Jamda Hari comes. Ah. This is the thing. Mandara Hari. Mandara Hari. Bhagarpur is. Bhagarpur. Bhagarpur is in a village of Guru Dharma. Yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also went thing. through that village. Where well, our temple, Jamda temple. Very nice place. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. You see, the Goranga Parvat is there. Mm -hmm. This in the village? Then nobody knows Goranga. But there is the one mountain, they say Goranga Parvat. In the village, yeah. Where, Because Mahaprabhu has seen there. Abhidadas Baba renounced the world at an early age and took initiation from Harikinkara Yogendravara, 
he remained in his ashram in Nintilapuri so long as he was alive. Sri Hari Kinkara was not only a Siddha Mahatma, but also a great pundit. He was regarded as the crest jewel of the pundits of Mithila, which had been famous for ages as a great center of learning. <laughs> <coughs> Avadadas studied the Shastras from him. He made a special study of Srimad Bhagavatam and learned the whole of it by heart. After the passing away of Gurudev, he went to Vrindavan and began to live in a house in Dobi Gali, which, in course of time, became his ashram. All his life, he was confined to this ashram. He went out of it only twice. He went out of it only twice during a year once on the occasion of the anniversary of Sri Madhvacharya and once on the anniversary of his Gurudev when he led the Nagara Kirtan. He used to be absorbed in bhajan all the time, sleeping only for two or three hours at night. His bhajan consisted exclusively of the pata, the reading, and, and pujana, worship, of Srimad Bhagavatam. He went on reciting the shlokas of Srimad Bhagavatam and turning its pages without looking at them. For he not only knew all the shlokas by heart, he also knew the shlokas with which each page began and ended. He worshipped Srimad Bhagavatam in exactly the same manner in which Sri Murti of Krishna is worshipped, because he regarded Srimad Bhagavatam as a manifestation of Sri Krishna himself. He wrapped it in a silken wrapper, placed it on a decorated sinasana, offered food to it, and ate its prashad. He also fanned it in summer, covered it with a quilt in winter, and swung it in a swing in the rainy season. Whenever any person went to him, he found him either reading Srimad Bhagavatam or talking about it. He hardly talked or allowed anyone to talk of anything else. Once, a young man came to Vrindavan from Allahabad. He had heard that if one ate the remains of food of a Siddha saint, he was blessed with the darshan of Radha Madhava. Someone told him that Avadadas Baba had won the favor of Radha Madhava. He went to his ashram. At that time, he was taking prasad. The young man went straight to him. Although he was asked by his disciple not to go near him while he was eating. He sat before him and requested with folded hands for a little prashad out of his plate. But Baba was lost either in meditation or in the darshan of some lila, even while he was eating. 
he did not hear. The young man thought that Baba had ignored his request. Therefore, he stretched his hand and took some prashad from his plate. As he was going to eat the prashad, Baba caught hold of his hand. He opened his fist and quickly, taking the prashad in the other hand, put it in his mouth. As soon as he had put the prashad in his mouth, he fell unconscious on the ground. He remained unconscious till late in the evening when Baba had finished his daily pata of Srimad Bhagavatam. He asked the sadhus who had come to listen to his pata to perform kirtan around him. As soon as kirtan began, he opened his eyes. For some time he looked all around in bewilderment. Then suddenly catching hold of Baba's feet, he began to weep and say, Pardon me, Maharaj. I have committed a grave offense at your feet. But now I have come to know about your real self. I shall remain at your feet and serve them all my life. I shall not go anywhere else. You have accepted me. Have mercy, Gurudev. Have mercy on me. Baba not only pardoned him, he gave him diksha and took his entire responsibility upon himself. One of the sadhus asked the young man what he had come to know about Baba. He replied, As soon as I put the remains of Baba's food in my mouth, I was transported to a transcendental region. There, I saw that the midday Bhojana Lila of Raj Drara Dranandana was going on. Brajanandana. Baba and Sri Krishna were sitting in the middle, surrounded by the Sakas, the friends of Sri Krishna. <coughs> and in an atmosphere of jollity and mirth, both were putting with their hands the remains of their food into each other's mouths. <laughs> a Bengali took Diksha and Desha from Baba and began to live in his ashram. He was very unsteady. He could not stay at one place for long. After some time, he asked Baba, he asked for Baba's permission to go and roam about in the country. Baba refused permission. Even then, one day he packed up to go. Baba asked, where are you going? Rade, uh, Rade, आओ सुन को फोन करना होगा प्रचार्य भैया को पूछ लो या जी से नंबर हाँ तो ये मेरे तो मेरा बिंदावन का नंबर है वो दिल्ली में है दिल्ली में है उनका नंबर ले लो तो वहाँ से गाड़ी आएगी अरे मेरे पास वो क्या नहीं उधर परेशान तो ही है ना वो बाबा आस्क वेर आर यू गोइंग नोवेर ही सेड आई विल जस्ट रोम अबाउट अ लिटिल एंड कम बैक Baba cautioned him, you will not gain anything by disobeying the Guru and roaming about like a monkey. I have obeyed the Guru so long. Should I obey him all my life? He replied and went away. 
For several years, Baba had no information about him. He began to worry about him. One day, while he was doing japa and loitering in the courtyard of the ashram, a young monkey came and caught hold of his feet. Baba understood that he was the same Bengali disciple. He had died and was born as a monkey because he had disobeyed the Guru. But on account of Bhakti, he remembered the offense he had committed in his previous life. He was repentant and had come to him to ask for pardon. Baba took pity on him and said, you have done well by coming. Now you do not go anywhere. Remain near about the ashram and come for prasad both the times. He tied Tulasi Kanti round his neck and asked his people to take care of him. The monkey began to live on the roof of the ashram and near about it. Both the times when Prasad was distributed, he came and sat down in the courtyard. In the evening, when Baba said the kata of Srimad Bhagavatam, he came and sat at the window and listened to the kata with great emotion, or with great attention. Baba called him Ramadas. One day, he said to his disciples, for two days I have not seen Ramadas. You also have not looked for him. Just then a disciple went to the roof of the ashram and saw that he was lying dead. When Baba was informed, he said, Ramadas was a Vaishnava. His funeral should be performed according to Vaishnava tradition. <laughs> For the monkey. Accordingly, he was laid on a vimana and carried to the Yamuna by his disciples along with Kirtan and delivered to the Holy River. A bhandara was held on the occasion and the Vaishnavas took prasad. Once, once Baba had the darshan of Sri Krishna in a very unusual and striking manner. He saw him doing the parikram of Srimad Bhagavatam. He used to recite after he had finished the kata of Srimad Bhagavatam in the evening. It was striking because it is always the worshipper who performs the parikram of the, of, of the object he worships. Should Sri Krishna have regarded Srimad Bhagavatam as the object of his worship? But the answer is obvious. Bhagavatam is not only the manifestation of Krishna in words, it is also the manifestation in words of prem, of transcendental love. Prem is the end not only for the finite souls, but also for Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly, Krishna is love itself. Yet, he yearns for more and more love. For such is the nature of love. The more love one has, the more one longs for it. It is the nature of Krishna as love that makes him say, Aham Bhakta Paradina. Wow. I am always subservient to my devotees who love me. He derives greater happiness from the love of his devotees than he derives from his own nature as bliss. 
Srimad Bhagavatam depicts his love pastimes with his devotees. <laughs> Therefore, he regards his own manifestation as Bhagavatam, as superior to himself, <coughs> and as worshipable by him. Therefore, also, he is always eager to listen to the Kata of Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sri Jiva Goswami depicts him in Gopala Kampu as Gopal Champu. Thank you, Gopala, Gopal Champu, as listening to the stories of his own Leela mm -hmm. from Madhu Kanta and Snigd, Snigda Kanta with great zest. That day, Sri Krishna must have been present in Baba's ashram as one of the listeners of the Bhagavata Kata, told by him, and must have felt constrained to do Parikram on the Bhagavata, like the other listeners around the Kata. He must also have specially enjoyed the Kata, told by a devotee like Avada Daspava, and must have felt constrained to give him something as present. Since he had nothing to give his present to Baba that might satisfy and accept his darshan, he gave him his darshan. Wow. Wow. Baba's pata and puja of Srimad Bhagavatam continued as usual even when he was 110 years old. In 1937, he fell ill. He became so weak that it was not possible for him to walk even a small distance. He had to be lifted and carried. On the second day of Krishna Paksha of the month of Falguna, his condition became more serious. His body was still and motionless. His disciples thought that his end had come. So they started Kirtan. But as soon as Baba heard the first line of the kirtan, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, he stood up to dance <laughs> with the kirtan. <laughs> His disciples got alarmed. They stopped the kirtan and lay him on the bed. <laughs> After a short while, his condition worsened. It became obvious that he was about to breathe his last. Then, according to the instruction he had given to his disciples some time before, they brought the dust of Gyana Gudini. Gudani. Gyan Gudri. Gyan Gudri. Gyan Gudri. Oh. Spread it on the floor and lay him down over it. At that time, his lips were moving slowly and he could be heard reciting the shlokas of Sri Bhagavatam in a very feeble voice. He continued to recite the shlokas in that manner until 3 a.m. next morning when he left the body to participate in eternal lila of Sri Krishna in transcendental Vrindavan. And that completes the lila. Oh. Uh,